If you've been working in web design and web development, you've probably heard people talk about JSON. It's something that's pronounced two ways, maybe has some JavaScript in it, and web apps return it sometimes. That's what we know. You might have been using the word JSON without really knowing what it is. It's okay. So what is JSON? Let's take a look. First, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Don't worry about the name for now. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that it's based on JavaScript, so it uses conventions that are similar to other C family languages like C, Java, Perl, and many, many others. This makes it a good candidate for a data interchange format. Whoa, what? Well, we'll get to that in a second. JSON was created by Douglas Crockford when he was an engineer at Yahoo in the early 2000s and slowly increased in popularity. Crockford also wrote a really, really good book on JavaScript called JavaScript, The Good Parts. The book isn't long, but it is dense, and you should read it. Crockford now works at PayPal and regularly speaks at conferences about JavaScript. So how to pronounce JSON? Well, some people pronounce it JSON, and other people pronounce it Jason, like the name. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Even Doug doesn't care. There's a lot of argument about how you pronounce that. I strictly don't care. Um, I think probably the correct pronunciation is Jason. So that's settled. JSON is a lightweight data interchange format. Let's unpack that a bit, instead of glossing it over like so many do when talking about JSON. A data interchange format is a way to move data from one program or application to another. The source and destination programs may have their own data formats like database schemas and database types, but both of them can output and ingest JSON. It's their common ground. You can think of data interchange format as speaking. I know that sounds weird, but stay with me. I have thoughts in my brain, which is my data store of memories and information. I want to share my thoughts with you. So I translate those thoughts into a commonly accepted format that you also understand. Speaking, in this case, the English language. The act of speaking a language is our data interchange format. It's how our brains share information between each other. You understand what I'm saying when I speak, and then you ingest that and store and process it in your brain, and vice versa. Now that's a crude example, but I hope that gets the idea across. So data interchange formats like JSON are most commonly found in APIs. A web application, for example, takes the data it stores and outputs it and shares it in this common format that the receiving application can understand. Other formats include XML, YAML, and CSV. XML used to be the standard format for APIs, and it's still used today, but JSON is becoming the standard in even more widely used. So JSON is a data interchange format, a way for two applications to share data with each other in a standard way they both understand. Let's talk about the JSON structure. First, JSON is plain text. It's easy to read by humans and machines. Just pop open a text file and start writing some JSON. JSON is always wrapped in curly braces. Inside of those curly braces are two different structures, name value pairs, which typically represent objects, so we'll call them objects, and then an ordered list of values. We'll call those arrays. Here's an example of some JSON for a Majingo course. I have the opening and closing curly braces. Then I have an object called JavaScript task runners. This has properties that are defined as name, value, or key value pairs. The left side is the name, what it is, and the right side is the value. A property in this JavaScript task runners object is URL, and the value of that is the full URL. Each property of this object is separated by commas, so the machine processing this JSON knows when one property ends and the next begins. The properties have different value types. There's a Boolean, a string, and an array. The tags property has an array for the value. It lists the tags that are associated with this course. Let's add another course so we have two objects in this JSON. Like properties, the objects are separated by a comma. If we assign this JSON to a JavaScript variable and then log it out to the console, we can poke around to see what we get. I can retrieve the data for the JavaScript task runners course, and we see it here. Or I can get more specific and just get the price. Or maybe just the tags associated with the course. Or just the first tag using an index of the array. 
So that's the gist of JSON. It's a data format that makes it easy and fast to transport data from one application to another. This is most often done via APIs. You can write and read JSON yourself, or use one of the many libraries available for generating and parsing JSON in your web application.